If you've been wondering what it really takes to land an entry-level job in cybersecurity, this video is for you. I've analyzed over a thousand job postings to uncover the truth. In today's digital age, cybersecurity is more important than ever, but breaking into the field can seem really tough and it's always guarded by experience and certifications. Well, I've used AI, some automation, to scour LinkedIn, Google Jobs, ZipRecruiter, Dice, and some others to find what employers really want from beginner cybersecurity professionals. So in this video, we're going to dive into cybersecurity careers and we're going to debunk some myths along the way. Now, first up, let's talk about some of the roles. So if we're looking at a cybersecurity analyst, SOC analyst, InfoSec analyst, threat hunter, vulnerability analyst, these positions have some overlapping skills, but they actually vary in experience requirements. So for beginners, the focus is on the kind of foundational layer skill set. But now the juicy part is actually in the salaries. So a lot of these entry level positions actually range from a salary bracket of around 60,000 dollars to ninety thousand dollars annually and this is via the latest data on pay scale but this is highly influenced by the role i found like so which level the role is at the location of the job is really important and then the hiring organization some organizations genuinely just pay more and that's the honest truth but remember this is really not just about the money, but it's about building a career that is a resilient and rewarding career. Now, there also are some challenges and there are some opportunities. So I've heard a lot of critique around gatekeeping in the industry, how tough the job market is, how you can have so many things, but you still don't get a job. But I firmly believe that if you do have the right skills and the right attitude, then the cybersecurity world is honestly your oyster. Employers aren't just looking for experience, they're seeking, you know, that special potential as well. So if you can demonstrate that you have the skills and you are eager to learn, then you're already a strong candidate in my view. Further to this, we're now going to unpack some of the certifications and skills that I found that was common amongst these beginner level job roles. But before we dive into that, let's maybe clear the air on some of like, there is a difference between certifications and skills, right? Certifications come from certification bodies, authorized bodies like CompTIA, ISC Squared, ISACA, even Microsoft and Amazon. Those are actual certifications that you get. And these are like your ticket to prove that you have the theoretical knowledge. But don't confuse a certification with a certificate program because certificate programs are offered on great platforms like edX and Coursera. These programs offer like mapped out learning paths and they offer you then a certificate of knowledge upon completion. So these programs are great for learning about the cybersecurity world and gaining skills in cybersecurity. But ultimately between certificate programs right now and certifications, certifications definitely do hold more weight. Now, on the other hand, there is also the skills subject. So skills are a real game changer and honestly, the most important in my view. During my time as a cybersecurity manager at an insurance firm in South Africa, I learned how important skills are firsthand. I was looking to hire a cybersecurity analyst and I had a few candidates with impressive resumes and certifications. but when interviewing these candidates they really lacked practical and real world skills and this brings me to an important lesson that certifications can open doors but skills really get you through them now when i was in the hiring process when i was busy hiring for my team i stumbled upon candidates on linkedin i eventually went to on my own hunt and my own search and on linkedin I stumbled upon these candidates who lacked formal education, right? So they didn't have a degree, they didn't have certifications, but they had hands-on technical skills. And I thought, why not? You know, why not bring them into the interview process? And I eventually employed someone who is now a mentee and a great friend. 
had no formal degrees but demonstrated an incredible aptitude for learning and he actually outshone those throughout the process with multiple certifications but the thing is that he had built projects and he had real world experience but he lacked the certifications that he could also get along the way so it's about what you can do and not just about what you know on paper i want to make it very clear I am not undermining the value of formal education and certifications. In fact, I'm a strong, strong advocate for obtaining certifications. They are a testament to your dedication and knowledge, but the real power of these credentials lies in your ability to apply the knowledge that you've gained. It's not just about having a certificate. It's about using the knowledge effectively in real world situations. So while I personally do encourage you to pursue certifications, just remember that the true worth of each of these certifications is really beneficial to you and it really becomes valuable to you when you can translate the knowledge that you've gained and learned into actual practical skills and solutions. Now, throughout this video, we are going to dive deeper and deeper and deeper into the actual skilling requirements. But firstly, let's not forget the soft skills. I'm not going to elaborate too much on the soft skills, but communication, problem solving, teamwork and adaptability are just as important as the technical skills. In cybersecurity, you're part of a team fighting against digital threats. Your ability to communicate effectively, think critically and adapt to fast changing scenarios will eventually be invaluable. Now, throughout the job research process, these were some of the top listed skills for the beginner level roles. In my professional opinion, I do agree with this as well. I think the analysis is correct and I think these are some of the skills that can truly, truly benefit you and help you to get a job in cybersecurity. First up, we have understanding endpoint systems. This includes end user computers, servers, operating systems and this is important for securing various endpoints in an organization's network and understanding any of the potential vulnerabilities that could cause harm or threats in that organization's infrastructure. Now, from a resource perspective, how to gain this skill, CyberRary offers a great course on the endpoint security fundamentals. It's just over two hours long and it covers the endpoint security landscape throughout five modules. Microsoft and Linux also have official documentation and community forums for learning about their specific operating systems, but there is also a great YouTube course by Free Code Camp that will walk you through the basics of computer systems. Next up, we have networking and network security. So this is web services, firewalls, Wireshark, TCP dumps, OSI and the TCP IP models. So the benefits of understanding networking and cybersecurity is huge. It's really important. It's listed in all of the job searches and profiles that I've reviewed. Understanding networking is really important for protecting an organization's network infrastructure and understanding the infrastructure layer and how data flows within it. Most cybersecurity professionals are faced with the challenge of understanding networking, whether you end up to be in a technical role or not. It just is that crucial. Resources perspective, the Cisco Networking Academy offers free introductory courses into networking and cybersecurity. I would recommend that you start with the networking essentials course first if you want to choose any one of these courses on the platform. But speaking of networking, I absolutely have to mention the Network Plus Fundamentals Training by Professor Messer. This is really comprehensive. It's free. It's available on YouTube. You should really run through this course if you want to get like the fundamentals and also cover all the content that's covered in the CompTIA Network Plus certification. Now to get truly, truly hands on with networking, two of the absolute core tools to use. I've used them a ton is the GNS3 and Wireshark. Now GNS3 is a free network software emulator that allows either for you to test in virtual or real world devices. So it's used to simulate complex networks and you can use it to simulate scenarios with firewalls, routers, switches from like various vendors. So you can download this for free from gns3.com and you can start playing with it almost immediately. 
Thin Wireshark is an insanely popular network protocol analyzer. It offers practical experience in network packet analysis. There are several free and online resources and labs available to learn Wireshark. You can go to the Wireshark website and start from there, wireshark.org, where you can get the actual documentation and some of the free training materials. Some of the next skills that pertain specifically to this role group or category is knowing how to work on a SIM, security incident and event management, threat hunting, vulnerability scanning and threat analysis. Now the benefits here is important for real-time analysis of security alerts and proactive identification of potential threats. Some of the resources that I would recommend, you can go to some of the SIM and SOAR providers websites itself. One of these very popular is Splunk. So you can go to splunk.com and you can do their training for free. They have a bunch of free intro courses using their SIM tool, which by the way, a lot of organizations do use today. So these skills would be absolutely beneficial to you. Next up, we're going to go back to Cyberary as a resource. Cyberary has a course which I've actually done myself on threat intelligence and hunting as well as the Windows event forwarding in which you'll use the Windows event forwarding WEF for incident detection with step-by-step -step instructions, configuration management and workflows. This is a really great course for getting hands on with like SIM slash SOC and investigation activities. So I highly recommend that. Then Microsoft also has the Microsoft Sentinel solution, which is highly adopted in the industry. It's easy to provision and test by yourself following the Microsoft Learn Path or the Microsoft Ninja training. All the resources are listed in the video description below. Next up, we're going to talk about security automation, the basics of scripting or programming. Now, if you've made it till this far, Thank you for watching. You are clearly serious about your cybersecurity journey. So now you should definitely subscribe because I talk about these things a ton, like the video and share it with anyone who might need to hear this. All right, so the benefits of scripting and automation in security. Now, if you know how to automate things, it increases your efficiency in handling security incidents, which reduces manual error. So it allows for automation and customization of various cybersecurity tasks, which ultimately is a skill that many organizations are looking for and that many cybersecurity professionals use on a daily basis. There are literally so many resources that can help you with learning scripting and give you ideas for automation. And this is definitely something that you can do as a project and list it on your resume or on your LinkedIn profile to kind of showcase your skills. But one resource that I really recommend is automate the boring stuff with Python. Now, this is one of the best books that you can read for automation with Python. It provides you with project ideas to really get hands on. There is a course on YouTube that you can actually access from their website, as well as a course on the website website itself that you can purchase. There is also a DevSec Ops course for beginners on YouTube by Free Code Camp. I also recommend that one where you dive into how to use Snake, which is a security tool, and then dive into kind of web application vulnerabilities and get hands on with web app investigation, etc. Okay, I feel like we covered a lot, but in summary, a mix of technical skills and certifications, as well as soft skills, makes for a well-rounded cybersecurity professional. Employers are looking for candidates who can bring value and adaptability to their teams. If you want to be successful in cybersecurity, then you have to equip yourself firstly with knowledge of the right tools. You have to have the right theoretical knowledge as well and the right attitude. Attitude counts so much. So I hope this deep dive gives you a clearer path to the skills that you need to be successful in cybersecurity. If it did, please drop your thoughts and your questions in the comments. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more content like this. That is it for this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.